Hello and welcome to Django Beginner Sorting Out Grooving Project. This is a small project for beginners. The idea here is that in previous tutorials I've presented some simple sorting algorithms. So now what we're going to do is implement those sorting algorithms into a very small scale Django project. This project is designed for beginners, for those who are beginning to learn a little bit about Django, who want to know a little bit more about Django, how to build a simple project with templates, utilizing function based views, looking at how to, in this project, how to grab data from a front end, from a form, for example, then we're going to use that data, process that data, use a sorting algorithm to sort that data and then to present it back to the user on the page. How this project is going to scale is that you can leave comments and request for different features. So what I'll do after this tutorial, once it's been presented, once you've watched it, you can then suggest how you want this project to expand with the idea of me then to have a look at those ideas and then I'll build the next step of this project. So maybe for example, you want to see this project utilizing class-based views, or you wanted to see a different feature. Maybe you wanted to store some data in a database. So have a think about what else you would like to see. Leave the comments, leave your comment in the comments. We'll have a look through and then we'll move to part two of the project, for example. If there's nothing to add, then we'll simply just keep with this project and then we'll, we'll move on, maybe you'd complete another project. So that's the idea of this project. So let's get started. So like I said, this is a beginner's project. This is what we end up with. So you can see it's a very simple project, ultimately, with the idea of just learning some of the basics of Django. So here we have a generated form which can take in some numbers. So the idea is that we input some numbers here, and then we can select our algorithm, maybe bubble or insertion, insertion sort. So these are algorithms that have been previously described in other tutorials. And then we can just press submit and the results are then sorted. So that is pretty much what we're going to build in this tutorial. So we we'll go through the basics of building some templates, have a look at the template engine, how that works, extending from a base template. We'll have a look at a view and then how to develop a very simple form like you saw in the previous page here. And then of course we need to connect these pages up because this is going to be one page and then we need to connect it to another page. So we need to know a little bit about URLs in this project. And then we have this drop down as well, just other elements of a form that we can develop. So we can also use the insertion sort. So in the background here, there's a selection that needs to be made. So we're going to build a separate function for each, each sorting algorithm so that it can be selected. So there's a bit of code that is needed there. And then like you can see, we go ahead and process the data. So just to reiterate again, like I said previously, the idea now is for you to think about what else would you like to see featured in this project and leave that in the comments and then I can take that forward potentially. So hopefully we're super clear on what it is we're going to develop. I don't want to waste your time. So I want to make it uh, co completely transparent all up front, exactly what we're going to be learning in this tutorial. So you can see here that this project's going to include starting a new project. I'll go through that process and build a new application, developing a simple Django template and using the template system to extend from a base template, for example, URLs, we go through that simple process using Django views, and then using automated forms or generating forms automatically. And then we'll have a look at implementing our sorting algorithms. And if that wasn't super clear, by the end of this tutorial, we would have built a small Django project, which you saw previously using HTML templates, function based views, process uh, data sent via a form, and then implementing multiple sorted algorithms. Okay, so that's the last slide. Let's get on to the project. So let's quickly talk about tools. I am making the assumption that you have Visual Studio Code. If you want to follow this exactly how I'm working, download Visual Studio Code. You don't need Visual Studio Code. If you have another code editor, that will work probably absolutely fine. You will have or will need access to the terminal to create a virtual environment, which we'll explain as we go along. But 
Like I said, download Visual Studio Code, get that installed. Now I am using, I switched over to um, a Mac computer here for this tutorial. I will give you steps on how to complete this task also with Windows. So I'll make the assumption you're either on Windows or Mac here. So uh, let's go ahead now and get started. So we are working or we're going to be working in a virtual environment. So that's just going to allow us to separate this project from uh, project's environment from the main computer uh, so that we can install dependencies without having to disrupt the initial installation of Python. And I guess that's another thing that I'm making the assumption that you already have downloaded Python. So if you don't have Python, uh, similar to Visual Studio Code, just hop into your browser, go over to Google, type in Visual Studio Code download, download the Visual Studio Code version for your machine. And the same thing with Python. You simply just need to open up the browser, type in Python download. It's as simple as finding the page, downloading the version for your project. So let's have a look here. So I'm using uh, Python. Uh, what version am I using? So I think it's a, an earlier version because I was doing another project that doesn't support Python 10. So I'm using Python 3.9. So as long as you've got Python, say 3.4 upwards, it should be working exactly the same as what you're going to see in this tutorial. So just before we create a virtual environment, let's go ahead and actually create a project folder. So I've already gone ahead onto my desktop and I'm just going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call this project. So I've already made a new folder on my desktop. So I'm just going to go over to open, go to my desktop, go to project one, for example, and then press open. So to start a new virtual environment, if you're on Windows, you're going to type in PY, the M flag, and then VEMB and VEMB. So this is just a folder name. You can make it whatever you like. So if you're on Windows, type in that, and then the virtual environment will start, or at least you'll create a virtual environment. And then on Mac here, we just need to type in virtual EMB and then VEMB, the folder name we want to um, create the virtual environment. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see now we have a new folder here called VEMB. Right. So on Windows, you're now going to type in PV uh, and then press tab. That's going to bring up VEMV and then backslash. So you're going to need a good backslash here, which is kind of shift and the button next to it on the left hand side on most keyboards. If you've got a British keyboard layout, of course. So then you'll need to type in on Windows script or just type in S and tab and then backslash then activate. So just type in A and press tab. And then go with that and that's the windows so if you're on mac you need to type in source and then vemv then it's in the bin and then activate and you can see on the left hand side here we have vemv showcasing the fact that we're now working within the virtual environment so now we've activated our virtual environment we're working within this virtual environment and we have essentially copied over a version of Python and also some of the other tools. One of the tools that we're going to use is the Python installation manager, if you like, or package manager pip. And we're going to download from the Python package index Django. So if you haven't seen this before, this is where um, you can publish your Python packages. Uh, it's the main repository really for Python packages. So Django is going to be somewhere here. Uh, and we can then go ahead and download it. You can see that we're going to download it via pip install Django. So let's go ahead and do that. So whether you're on Mac or Linux, exactly the same, pip install Django. So I've already installed mine, so yours is going to look slightly different to that. So that should download. Now we have Django installed. So now we can utilize Django. So let's go ahead and create a new project. So Django admin. So that's the management command for Django that we can access some of the Django tools. And then we go ahead and say start uh, project and then we call that core. OK, so you can see a new folder started. Now you can see that everything is side of here. Now what we want to do is delete that. OK, so let's go ahead and delete that. And what we want to do is we want to create the project within inside of this folder. So afterward, I press space and dot. I did press up then to get the previous command and then press enter. And you can now see I have a new folder called core and then the, the manage.py file was here. So this is a, a wrapper, if you like, for Django admin. So I can run Django admin commands. 
Manage.py, and we'll see that in action shortly. So next up, let's go ahead and build a new app. So if you're not familiar with Django development, typically we break down the components of our application into smaller components to make them more reusable um, over different projects or just this project. But it allows us to scale things down, makes it a little bit more collaborative in that people can de develop smaller components of the application, for example. So uh, let's go ahead and now type in Python, unless you're on Windows, Py, Py. And then let's go ahead and use manage.py to then start a new app. So start app, and then let's call this algorithm. Okay, so we're just gonna call this app algorithm. There we go. So you can now see we have a new folder. So there's no, not, no dot needed here, like we did with the project. So now we have a new project. Now, typically what happens now is this is the core project. It's just called core. Right, so Django knows about this project. Now it doesn't know about algorithm project because it's not connected to our main project, which is core. So what we need to do is go into settings and then we need to go down to, I've already gone past it, the installed apps here. And then inside of here, we need to just tell Django that we've got a new app that it should know about. And that's called algorithm. So you don't need to comment, but I just add that there in case you forget next time you add a new app. Right, so that tells Django about the app. Now, we won't be getting as far in this tutorial as creating creating models, for example, for a database, which is really why we need this. So Django knows to add those models to a database. But we'll just put that there just for good practice for now. So now we're ready to start building our application. We have it ready. So. Let's just uh, imagine this, for example. I was going to build a nice little graphic for this, but I think we can get this, All right? So let's imagine this is our application. So what's happened here? Let's just think about the workflow, right? So the typical workflow of a basic app here is that, or a built basic process that might happen when you have the app completed is that the user types in the domain name. So imagine this is your application connected to your Django application. So someone types in the domain name um, or an address that's related to your website. That request is sent over to your server. Your server then directs that message over to your Django application. So your Django application picks up that message, that HTTP request, and it looks at the, um, the destination or the request um, location. So for example, this might be the home page. Um, for example, you can see here, this is project dash Django. So this is essentially the kind of a, a URL location of a resource in Django, project slash Django. So what's happening here then is Django will be able to read that. Uh, sorry, you can not really see that, apologies. But it says project dash Django. So project dash Django is gonna be read. So in this project, first thing that's gonna happen is Django is gonna look at its URLs in this URL page, I'm just gonna remove that. And it's gonna try and match it to one of its patterns here, the URL patterns or paths. So that request from the user, that pattern slash project slash Django is gonna try and be matched against one of these paths here. And then these paths here are attached to views. So views is our logic. We're gonna create our logic in our views, connect it to databases, bring in other resources. And then what's gonna happen once we've done that is we're then gonna send back the data for the user so that the page is then displayed on the screen. So that's like a general process, if you like, of a general application. So we're gonna follow that path. First of all, creating a URL for a new resource, and then we create a view for that resource, and then we build a template. So the view will connect everything together and send the template back, back to the user. Right, so what we're gonna do here is just extend this list. Right, so we could just add more paths here, but we've got a new project and we want to associate whatever we can to this project. So let's go ahead in our algorithm um, project app here and let's create a, a new file and we're just gonna call this urls.py. Okay, so it's just a copy of the same name as these URLs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend these URLs so that Django reads these URLs and then it's gonna read the, the URLs in the algorithm project. So we're going to need to bring in include so that we can include other files here. And then we're going to say path. And then um, path is going to be called, let's call this uh, algorithm. So the users need to type in the domain name and then algorithm slash in order to get to this resource. 
So actually, let's just um, call this to make it a little bit easier for us. Just let's just call this demo, right? So the user has to type in the domain name and then demo to get to this resource. So this resource, we're now going to kind of now include some more URLs, which is going to be this URL here. So we need to say, for example, algorithm. We need to tell Django to look in the algorithm app. And then inside of here, there's a file called URLs. And then that's it for now. So let's go ahead and now build up our URLs. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, we will need a single doubles here, apologies. So hopefully that is making sense. So now we can say include the algorithm URLs. Okay, so let's go into algorithm and URLs and let's go ahead and build this up. Now what we can do to speed things up is just copy this over to the algorithm URLs and then let's get rid of include and we don't need that there. Okay, we don't need the comma. Okay, and then we don't need that. Right. So let's go ahead now and remove that too. <laughs> there we go. So now what we're going to do, when someone types in demo, that's going to take them over to this URLs here. And so now inside of here, we have a root directory, which is nothing. So basically, if some, someone types in slash demo, demo, demo slash, it's going to take them to this URL pattern here. This URL pattern is going to pick it up. So let's call this the home page, right? So this can be the home page. So let's connect this to a view that doesn't exist yet, but we're going to call it home. And then we're going to have a name. Yeah, we're just going to say name equals home page. So this can be really useful, this name, when we want to refer to this path later on. And we probably won't get to that point in this tutorial, um, but it's good practice. Maybe, well, maybe we will use namespaces. We'll see. Right. So views.home. So you can see that we don't have any views. So from dot from this dot referring to this directory here, we're going to import uh, the views. So the view file here or module. OK, so inside this view modules, we're looking to now build a view called home. So let's just go into our view. Let's create a new function, def or define for creating a new function. And this is going to be called home. Now, remember that the user is sending a request, a HTTP request. They've gone to our resource and then we then send a request to our server to get that resource. So what we need to pass into here is the request and all that data in the request. And then we need to send it back, need to send back something. So let's go ahead and just send back. So return and let's say render. So render is basically a function that puts everything together, um, the template, and then kind of sends it back to the user. So we're going to send back the request um, data with all the new information. And then we need a template. So let's um, create a new template. We call that index.html or let's call that home to kind of just match that up. That makes sense. So that's our template. So we don't have any templates yet. So now we need some templates. So Django is automatically going to look for a new folder here in algorithm called templates. So let's create a new template. We're talking about HTML template. So it's going to be home.html. And then inside of here, we're just going to say hello world, right? OK, so that's a template. That's hello world. And that's now going to be sent back to the user if they do navigate to our demo app. So if they type in slash demo, that's going to take them to this set of URLs. That's going to be matched against this against this URL path. And that's going to then start the view home, which is in here, which is then going to return the home HTML template. So that's the flow. So let's go ahead now and type in py or python if you're on Mac and then manage.py. If you're on Windows, you can probably just type in manage.py in actual fact. Notice I use tab so I don't have to type everything in and then run the server. So what's going to happen now is a lightweight Python server is going to be started so that it can actually capture the request from the user on the local host. And then it's then going to be processed by Django. So notice here that we start a server on 127001. So that's the loopback address, right? So essentially, we're sending a message to our own computer. On our computer is the server that's running. So the server will pick up that data and then pass it over to Django. So notice that I already have a server running. Uh, so let me just close that server in the other window. 
if I can do that. It doesn't seem to want to do that. So uh, let's just try this again. You can see that, that port's already in use. So let's um, change the port online. I'm going to use 8001. So you can see that's how to change the port. Um, it's because I had a different project running in the background here. Um, it's not, it's, oh, there we go, it's cancelled now. So um, if you want to close the server, control C, and then let's just do that again, but on port 8000, and this time it's working. So over in the browser, I'm going to type in 127.0.0.1. Uh, Remember, that's the loopback address, the address of the sh machine. Type in demo, and then you can see it says, hello world. So you can see that everything is now working for us nicely. We don't have any problems, so now we can move on. So now we need to build a form. So let's go ahead in the algorithm. We're going to generate a new form. So we're going to create a new file here. We're going to just call this form.py. All right, so we now need to build a form. So we want to kind of generate that not automatically, but we want to tell Django the parameters of our form, and then it's going to generate the form code for us. So let's go ahead and from Django, we're going to use some Django resources. Uh, apologies, from, from Django. And then I'm going to say import forms. Cool. Right, so I'm going to eventually um, have an option for different choices in a drop down. So I'm going to build some choices equals, and then let's just build that up. So what I'm going to say here, for example, is I'm going to describe the different choices. So we're going to say bubble sort. Um, so we just define the different parameters here, bubble sort. Okay, so that's one option. And then we can then go ahead and build a, another option. So we have three algorithms that have been in, introduced so far, and that's, I think, in the interme Python intermediate course. Uh, so this is insertion sort, apologies. Um, so let's go ahead and add that. Okay, so those are some options that we can utilize in a minute in our drop down. So let's create a new class. Um, let's call this uh, form, let's call this sorting form, for example, which can be capital. capital. Um, and then let's just extend from forms. So we're just bringing in all the um, all the features from forms.form so that we can then start describing what should be in the form. So the numbers. So we're going to need a new form field numbers. That's going to be forms. Dot, that's going to be a character field. So we're expecting the character field, only characters to be entered into this form. And then we can give it a label and that's what's going to be displayed um, in the form, like the name of the label, if you like. So let's call that numbers. That's going to appear next to the actual um, form input. And then we can just have, for example, max length. Uh, let's just say 100. So just some other kind of data that we can add in. So let's then create a drop down for our algorithm. So algorithm equals forms. So we're just going to bring in a different resource here. It's going to be a character field, um, but we're going to create a kind of a selection option. So uh, let's go for label again, equals, and that's going to equal select your algorithm. Yep. Okay. Select your algorithm, and then we're going to need to bring in a widget. It's a little bit annoying. I do apologize all this uh, info here. Um, you kind of get used to it um, or turn it off. I haven't set this machine up yet properly. Um, so forms dot select. Um, and then we need choices. So this is going to be yeah, choices. Um, equals and then that's going to be the choices. So here we created a widget equals form dot select, and that's basically just going to create a drop down, if you like, uh, with these choices, and then it's going to pre-populate this character field with with those choices. 
So that's the choices. Now this code is available on GitHub. So have a look in the link in the description. You'll be able to find this code. If I've gone too quick, um, or if you're not too sure, if you maybe just made some typos and it's not working, just double check your code with mine. So a good thing to do is, um, well, at this point, you can go ahead and just word wrap maybe. So just use word wrap. And in addition to that, what's also can be useful is if you go to um, auto save and select that too. And that's in the file option. Apologies, you can't see that. So auto save so you don't have to keep saving because one of the problems I find with some students is that they forget to save and they then need some help. And of course, they just haven't saved the file. And there's normally a dot here to indicate that the file hasn't been saved, for example. Okay, right, so with that in place, we now have a form. So we now need to implement that form, of course, and make that available on our page. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So let's go back. I'm just gonna close everything down here because it gets a bit busy. So as well as click there. So inside of my algorithm app, I'm now going to go to my view. So this is my home at the moment. So what I want to do here potentially is I want to now add my form. So let's say form equals, and then whatever my form is called. So my form was called a sorting form. Okay, so let's call this sorting form. Okay, so we're going to need to bring that resource in so it can actually be accessed. We can't just simply just ask for it in thin air if you like. So let's say from uh, dot forms, let's just import it. So let's import uh, sorting form. There we go. So that's imported in. So it says here no module named algorithm dot forms because I've named it form and not forms. That's why. So let's just rename that. Okay, so everything is now imported in. So I'm using the information down here. It was in clear text, no module name form. So a module uh, typically is referring to a file here. So that allowed me to identify that forms wasn't correctly named. So what I need to do now is I need to pass this form into my page. So I'm going to need to add some more kind of context, some more data. I need to pass this over to or make it available for the actual template. So form is just a reference name for the data. And then the that's like a key. And then our value, so is form. So at the moment, our form is being stored in form here, this new variable. And now I'm basically calling it here. So I'm going to need a comma here. Let's not forget that. And this data is now going to be available. This form data is now going to be available through the template or in the template uh, by calling it form here. Okay. So let's go ahead now and go into our templates home and let's now actually implement it within our template. So there's, there's a few ways for us to do this. Um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to create a, a new form. So specify a new form. We might need an action. So for example, when the actual form is submitted, where does it go to? So it's going to go to a different page eventually. And then we're going to select our method equals. So this is the method of sending the data, either get or post. So we're going to post this data. That's basically a HTTP kind of transport tool to send this data over. And that's worth reading through if you're not too sure what that is. Right, so that's this form. Happy days. And then now we need to just make sure that we're using our CSRF token, passing it across. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to send any data. And again, this is something that you can read about, CSRF token. So like I said, it, this isn't going to work uh, unless this token is available. So how I would probably describe this at the minute is that the page will load, Django will give you a token, and then you submit your form. Django is looking for that token to match it up. And that basically just is kind of helping secure that page. So Django knows it's coming from a, a known source, this data, for example. So uh, let's go for, uh, I may have described it completely wrong. So <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit late. So uh, form, right? So that refers, that form name refers to our form right here, right? So that's form. <laughs> and uh, so I'm just laughing about what I just said. Right, input 
Um, now we need an actual input, so an actual way of submitting. Um, so we're going to create, and this is essentially the actual submit form button. Value equals, normally there's a value, just call that submit. It has no really preference reference here. That would be absolutely fine. So that will create a button. So we've got our form framed with some actions that we're going to describe in a second. And this is how we're going to send our data through post. CSRF token for a little bit of security. And then this is the form data. So we're passing this over here in the context form. We're going to grab those essentially in this form is two, two fields, right? Two um, inputs. So we're just grabbing those and Django is automatically then placing them here and making the code for us. And then we have the submit button. So we can now go and have a look at this. If we refresh our page, you can see that we haven't started the server. Um, you can see that there is a, has no attribute select. Um, that's in forms. So potentially there is a, a problem here. Um, that we have forms dot select. My apologies. Um, this is right. It doesn't have an attribute select because it's with a capital. So there we go. So now you can see that our server was already on and it's caused an error because I hadn't used a capital here in my forms. So be careful of that. Let's go back into uh, the website and there we go. So we now have our form and we now have our algorithm, if we press submit, nothing will happen because we've not told it what to do. So this is the action. Okay, so when we press the actual submit button, it's gonna perform this action. So what we want to do now is we want to capture that data and send it over to a new view. So let's call this uh, the processing. Do that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so we're going to call this, um, yeah, let's go for action. So slash the home, um, and then let's go for uh, processing. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So what's gonna happen is that when we press submit, we're gonna go to the processing page. Right, so let's just refresh this. Um, cancel that, sorry. Let's go ahead and submit. We'll do that again, refresh the page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so let's do that again. Um, submit and you can see now we've gone over to you can't so much here but the slash processing page right so what we're going to need to do now is actually build that because Django is telling us hang on it doesn't exist all I know about is admin and demo so that's what it knows about so we're going to go back into our project go into the algorithm URLs and we're going to make a new path so let's go ahead and so we're going to call this um, processing I think so in our home is processing yep so processing obviously it's going to be connected well now we need a comma here that's why it's underscore red so processing all good we're going to need a view so views dot we call this processing and then we just have a nice name here equals processing there we go Okay, so now we need a, a new view called processing. So let's just get rid of the form. We don't need that in the home. Let's go back to our view then. Uh, let's go and create a new function called processing. We need to take in the request. So what's going to be stored here in the request is the post data. So the data that's been captured from the form. So let's just pass for now. Okay, so let's go back. Oh no, we don't need to pass now. Let's go ahead and just return. Let's set this up. So same again, render, let's re return the request and then we're gonna need a template. So we're gonna call that processing.html. Okay, so let's go into our templates. I'm going quite quick. Apologies if it's too quick. So we're gonna call this processing.html. There we go. And then hello, processing. Okay, so hopefully now, now we've saved that, if we go back here and refresh, it should send us to that page. But we'll go back here and do that first. Right, so a bit of that, submit, and it's gone over to processing, but notice it is not actually working. So Django still doesn't know about these URLs. Right, so let's go back in. Um, let's see if we've done anything wrong here. So you can see that the server's running okay, which is um, all good. Um, we've got processing slash connected to our view. 
so that seems like it's okay what you can do maybe is just uh, quit the server and just run it again okay uh, let's go back and just refresh let's go back here let's uh, refresh the page press submit you can see still see it's not working so maybe it's a, a typo so prrcc right so processing slash views dot processing so it's still not recognizing the fact that there is a another url here potentially so let me explain what's going on so so far we created a url um inside of the let's just break everything down i'll just close everything down and I'll explain this so inside of our main project core we have urls and you can see it we have two paths so admin and demo so in order to do anything related to the algorithm app we first need to type in demo slash now what we did previously we typed in demo slash and that took us to the home page and that was connected to the home view and now what we're trying to do is get to the processing page now we keep being told that it doesn't exist here because it says it only knows about admin and demo right so why doesn't it exist well let's go back into the templates look at the home and what we're trying to do this slash here represents home so we're saying okay get rid of everything in the url go to the root directory and then put in the word processing and that's what's happening so if we go to for example the demo and do this uh, you can see that where we're going to is slash processing but what we want to do is go to demo slash processing okay and you can see that it works so in actual fact this slash is incorrect so if we don't have this in it's just going to extend what's already there in the url so slash demo so now that then we'll go into a new folder or new kind of directory or you know, a new area called processing and then our url will get matched up so let's try that now i've changed it let's just go to uh, demo let's just type in our numbers let's go to submit you can see now it's going to our process page okay so hopefully that made sense right so no slash here you see how something simple can you know take maybe a couple minutes or potentially if you're new to django it's going to take a little bit longer to actually fix and that can get quite frustrating so i did speed up there and i do apologize if that was too quick right so now we have that in place we now know we're here so what we need to do now is capture our data and then we need to process it so we need to send it through our sorting algorithms and then return it back to the user right so let's go ahead and and do that so the first thing that we can do is check to see if the user has gone to this processing page via our form and what we can do is we can check that by saying if the we can say that by if the request so this request if inside of here we have the method so inside of here is going to be a date some bit of data uh, and we can check the method in which someone's actually entered this page so if for example the meth method was post if the, someone actually clicked on the form and went to this page via post then it would then do whatever in this if if they haven't then it's just going to return them to whatever page so first of all we'll check to see if the users actually um, come from our form and then what we're going to say is form equals and then we need the actual form name which was sorting form okay and then uh, we're going to say request uh, dot post so we're going to create a form instance and populate it with the data from the request okay so why do we do that well what we can now do is kind of validate this information uh, because if you remember in the form we specified things like max length and also we specified the character field so if what we can now do is kind of match all that up and then check to see if it kind of matches what's expected in these fields so if we put something random in these fields that isn't a character field isn't a character sorry then is going to be validated as false so we're not going to go any further so if we for example put in too many characters so max length 100 so we put in 101 characters in this um, in this input then it's going to get validated as um, false um, that isn't possible 
okay so it breaks the rules of this input field here so we aren't going to be able to go further in our code so we're going to check to make sure and this is good for a little bit of security to essentially just check to make sure the data that is in the actual form is the data that's expected to be able to um, make the system work correctly if you like okay so if form is valid so we're going to check the data if it is valid then we're going to do something so what we can now do is kind of collect the information so we'll just do that in a manual way so inside of the request there's the data from the user from that form so we're going to say get that data so we can grab the data by its name so the name here is numbers and algorithm so let's just get numbers so we grab that data and place it in x and then we get the request dot post we're then going to get the algorithm data as well that's the name of the algorithm cool right so i just uh, bring that down for now okay so now we've got that information so we're storing that in those variables so what we need to do now is i reckon just let's go ahead and actually create a new function for our sorting algorithm so let's do bubble sort right uh let's call this bubble sort okay so we're going to take in something so let's take in the numbers to sort nts so this is a similar code um, if you have seen um, the sorting algorithm uh, the sorting algorithm tutorial um, so i'm just going to go ahead and just type this out um, so nts equal length so we're going to find the length of our numbers and then we're going to create our first kind of outer for loop I won't explain this too much because uh, you can go ahead and just check out the tutorial but I'll just type this out very quickly so um, basically we're going to create a, a length uh, a range uh, find the range of our length here so we know how many times to loop through and then every time we loop through um, we're basically just going to do what the bubble sort algorithm does so minus i uh, minus one okay so we're just going to use the uh, the more naive version of this uh, so ntfp um, this is where we're going to start to kind of swap the numbers around again apologies for not explaining this in full um, there is a whole tutorial on, on this um, so p it's just a little bit of a typing exercise for you um, ntf so now we need to yep, swap it around. So we're saying p plus oh, p plus uh, one is now going to equal nts. The next number. So we're just swapping the numbers. So p plus one uh, nts p. Yes. Okay. So then we're going to return nts. So that's the numbers that have been sorted now. So that's the bubble sort algorithm. So what we're going to need to do is we need to grab the numbers that are being entered into our form here, and then we need to pass them over to the bubble sort. They will then get returned, and then we can output them on the page. So that's the, the kind of flow here, if you like. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the date, the, um, we need to, yeah, we need to, grab this data here these numbers and we need to put it into a certain format because what's expecting here is a list so yeah we're using range so it's expecting a list so for example it needs to be one uh, and it needs to be numbers yeah integers yeah so we're, we're expecting numbers integers and a list so one dash uh, two dash three dash four comma not dash comma sorry one comma two comma so just a list basically format so what we need to do is we need to format our our data here. Now, obviously, this is a number. This is another number. This is another number. So some users might type in commas. So this is more, I didn't want to get into that kind of detail. So I'm making the assumptions that users know that they need to separate with a space the numbers so that they can be sorted. So what we need to do is we need to grab that data and we need to format that into a list, right? So. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So first thing we're going to do is say split. 
So if you're not too sure what these do, uh, so um, apologies, we're going to take the data, so x dot split. So what we can do now, if you don't know what split does, we're just going to print. Let's go ahead and press print Z. That's going to print to the console down here when we refresh this page. So let's go over to the page. Uh, you can see the page is run. You can now see that our data using split is going to put it into the format that's expected. But you can see here, these are not integers at the moment, for example. Um, so we're going to need to convert them into integers. Now, I realize that this can be done in many different ways. And this is maybe uh, some might consider a bit long winded or naive. So let's use map object here equals map. And then we're going to say integer. And then um, that's going to be Z. Right, so basically we're just going to loop through these and just make sure that they're integers. So what we can now do is print uh, the map object. Right, so let's do that. Let's uh, refresh. And oh, now we have a map object. I do apologize. Of course it was going to happen. But essentially we've then taken our, we've taken our a list there that we've generated and we've just made, now made sure that our list is uh now integers, so it's in the correct format that is now expected, um, is now expected. So now that's in place, let's go ahead now and actually um, run the data, pass the data into our algorithm. Now we're going to have multiple algorithms here, right? So, I mean, what I could do here, for example, is just say something like uh, data equals and then bubble sort right and then pass in our data which is our, our map object here right so we could do that um however um oh yeah well let's uh let's do that actually and then let's print that out for now okay so we're just going to print that out so i'm going to refresh press send and it says map has no length oh okay so there's a little bit of an error here um Oh, maybe because we haven't got any data. Let's let's just double check this. So let's just refresh this page uh, for to submit. Okay, so we've got an error here. Object of type map has no length. Len. Okay, so I can see what's going on here. Um, we need to now uh, get our list um, of integers. And then that should equal a list. So we need to now format into a list our map objects. Okay, so if we were to now kind of print this out, we would now see our list of integers. So let's just uh, quickly comment that out. So what we're going to do here is we've uh, looped through, um, formatted our data into integers, uh, created our new list now with our mapped objects. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do that again data is not defined okay so that's because it is here so let's just get rid of that apologies never run smoothly right so we can now see um that after we formatted our data so we've added data into the form it's been passed over we've validated it we've then extracted the numbers into x we've then split we've then mapped and then we've then saved in a list. And this is what we're returning. So this is the data now we've sorted from the user input. And now we're then going to pass that over now into our algorithm. So that's what the algorithm is expecting, a list. So uh, we're now going to pass over that. So this is going to be list of integers. Cool. So we pass that into our bubble sort um, algorithm. And then now we're going to just print the data. Right. Okay. So let's go ahead and just refresh again. So that's just going to resend the data. And you can now see that it's been ordered. Obviously, that doesn't help. So let's just generate some random numbers. Oh, random numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and sort. And now you can see it's been sorted in order. Okay, so you can see that everything is working. So what if I, for example, wanted to create another algorithm and use two algorithms 
Well, let's have a look. So let's go ahead and just add in our new algorithm. So I'm going to call this insertion sort algorithm. I have just copy and pasted that in. I apologize. You can just pause and type that out. You don't want to see me type that out again. So again, if you're interested in the insertion sort algorithm, there is a tutorial in the channel which will explain this in detail exactly how this code is working. So we now have two functions. So we now need to be able to way of kind of selecting that automatically. So let's remember that the user is um, selecting bubble or insertion sort. Now what I'm going to do just to make this easier for us is I'm going to rename this with the capital. So they're going to be the same name as the actual function. So we can easily match these names with the function, right? That's the plan. So you can now see they have the capital. So that's the same name as the actual function. So what I can do is I can now capture the user's um, request, algorithm selection, sorry, in Y. And I can now use Y to actually then um, kind of automatically select the right query. Oh, sorry, the right function. So what I need to do here is I need to say, um, so data equals, so let's get rid of this here. So I now need to kind of do this kind of automatically based upon the user's input. So let's say um, data now equals, and we have to use globals. So we're going to use globals is just one way of doing it. And inside the globals, we can then now kind of select the algorithm by name. So the name is going to be passed in here into Y. So that's going to say bubble sort. That's going to return bubble sort, the name text bubble sort or insertion sort. So that's that. And then basically I'm just going to start the algorithm how I would normally do that by adding some data or passing data into it. So I'm able to select the function via its name by utilizing globals here. So that's a way of um, passing something from the form using that text to then run this function like a normal function. And I'm just going to pass over the data into that function like I did previously. Right, so now we've done that, we have this data, so we can now pass it back to the front end. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So we're going to give it kind of a reference, and then the value is going to be, the data is going to be in data variable here. So we do that, don't forget the comma. Oh, yeah, don't forget the comma. Yep, okay. So once you've got that in, uh, let's go ahead and now print out. So let's go into processing, the processing page here. And let's now, for example, make a simple div. Okay, and then inside of here, we're going to output some data. So data, double curlies, and then we refer that, or referred that to as data. So we're just going to print out the outcome of our algorithm. Right, so let's go back here. Um, let's refresh our page to make sure everything's up to date. Uh, hopefully, when we do that, we now use bubble sort to print and sort. So we can do the same thing, hopefully, with insertion sort. And there we go. So hopefully you can see how simple it is to, to do that. Now, um, let's just go ahead and use a template system. So I'm going to say new file, and then we're going to call this base html so typically what we do instead of having to write all the html for pages um, the kind of typical boilerplate text what we can do is just uh, utilize a template here and then utilize that on all pages so if i go over to something like uh let's open up a new tab and bootstrap uh, this is just for speed so i go over to docs and then what i can do is just grab the starter template and go back. So I've just copied that and then I can paste it right, right there. Happy days, right? So once I've done that, I can then go ahead and now um, add a block. So let's call this block content. Okay, so that's where the content is going to reside from all the other pages. So the idea here is that this base will be used on every single page, but the code here that I want to include on these separate pages will now appear or be injected within this content. So it enables me to reuse this page on every other page. So what I can now do, for example, is say extends, and I'm going to extend from the base, this page here, 
And what I need to do now is add a block called content. Did I call it content or contents? Contents, I call it contents. Okay, and then what I need to do is just move this block. I need to move down here. Okay, there we go. And yeah, so that should now work on the home page. So we can just test that out. So let's go back to the home page. And you can see that it's, it's exact. Mm, base does not exist. I wonder why that is. Well, that's because I've not included .html, right? Yeah, okay. So we've got to name it correctly. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can now see that the the code, well, the, the style looks different. That's because we're using now the Bootstrap CSS. So we're using a different font. So you can see that it's worked okay. Right, so we can do the same thing again for the processing page. So we'll do that and then we'll just drop that in where the code needs to go and get rid of that. There we go. So it's exactly the same again. Uh, we're using now the base template extending from that. We're just going to put the data from processing inside of this block here. So let's just give that a go. We'll just uh, do that. Press submit. There we go. Okay. So you can start to see how that templating system is, is working, allowing us to reuse code. Okay. So now it's over to you. What else would you like to see in this project? So... <laughs> I'm happy to take any suggestion. Um, we can have a look at other aspects potentially uh, that you're interested in. So we are looking for, or I'm looking for, say we, I'm not too sure why I said we. I'm looking for some suggestions, maybe just some simple suggestions to begin with uh, for us to explore further. If there's any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll happily try and take them for you for, or maybe someone else will be able to answer them. Uh, so we now have covered the, the main part of this project. So we had a look at very brief look at HTML templates, hopefully got a general idea of how that works now in Django and how things are connected up. We looked at function based views. So we created some views, some functions, and you saw how we can bring in other functions potentially dynamically. And then we process data sent from a form. So by that, I mean that we took that data, we formatted it, we validated it in the form, and then we utilized it to run through our algorithm. And then we implemented the multiple sorting, the multiple sorting algorithms. So thank you very much. Hopefully um, this tutorial was valuable in some way. That is sorting algorithms, Django implementation. Thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.